Word up. Oh man. Whew. How's everyone? Hmm. That's good. Well, how do I start this thing? Um, this works still, yes? I was trying not to go into a pre of any kind, but <clears throat> I think I'm a little nervous, so I'm just gonna let you know that. Um, this was a very challenging topic to me, you know, because I didn't really, you know, because words have meanings, and then meanings have words that have meanings inside those words, and so you keep going deeper into the space. Musically, I always feel like that breaks the tension of words because you know, every note for me has a meaning, except that it has a universal meaning. Like, so, you know, I've gone in front of children and I play, I play a note, and I'll be like, well, what color is that note? And the children will, like, define it. They'll say, oh, it's red, and be a whole bunch of ideas around it. So I figure I'm going to start with this song that ethically speaks to me personally, and then kind of grow it from there. So. On the 41st day, I start to recognize the bona fide mess I hate and despise society's creed we live in, sketched in greed, positioning desires and wants over needs. Shameless crime that everywhere we got people in systems that just don't care, pocketing the wealth of ours for their own. Some have mansions and some no home. The head of state turns a blind eye, and another state of a night is the cry. Why do you ask, are we in this space? Is it a humble position we'll always face? Picked out in gold, shiny things. I speculate when the truth comes, it's not in gold. To prep your mind with the bill to unfold. Why do you ask, do we go there? Without a map and direction to anywhere. No pleasant state, current place. But do I point to the media to start the chase? Uh, look within. And not without Stand up with me And let's all shout, shout about love Love is a word we use every day We don't use this word like yesterday Time to recognize you got to bring it home Focus spirit to be reborn Present these concepts to your inner child Cause your adult hasn't focused for a while No, no Love God, love family, love my friends, and I sure love me. I love the fact that I can rise above. Love the fact that I can love. Love, 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 love. Love, 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 love. Love, 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 love. Can you can you do 
love part with me? Just respond. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm feeling that. Come on. Keep, <laughs> keep it going. Keep it going. Appreciate that, appreciate that. Just as much for you as it is for me, so thank you for that, because that was beautiful, which I did just there. <laughs> it was, like, <laughs> no, it really was, like, seriously, like, the sound quality was beautiful in this room, <laughs> and the acoustics are perfect. Uh, so, you know, I, I started that way because uh, that song dynamic is about nine, it's about nine years old, and anybody who writes music, creates music, uh, let's music channel through them, you know, however you see it. Um, it's a very dynamic experience, you know, because I'm sure that the Beatles, de they never get sick of t playing those songs. I'm sure of it. You know, they might say that, but like, you know, can't buy me love. Like, that's the jam. I don't care what. <laughs> I don't care, you play that five zillion times, that is the song. And so this, it was reinforced by the ethics of humanity, you know, music is that. Um, 41st day, there it is. I do this thing called the 41st day, based on this song. And the song came up, I was traveling in Oakland, and uh, I, it's a short story, I left the guitar, and so that was a very conscious choice. I was like, I'm not gonna play guitar. I'm going away from the guitar for a year. And then I just couldn't do it. Then I, I wind up buying this guitar on the road. And I think around 41 days in the mission, you know, the walk, so to speak, this thing came, this music. And so I do it now. I've been keeping this journal for like eight years called the 41st day. Every 41 days, I start the journey. I say that I'm in the 41 days of the word new right now. And, you know, I keep hearing this, I've heard this phrase over time, that there's nothing new under the sun. So now I'm challenging this notion, personally. Um, and then this idea of ethics came to me, you know, in this, in this journey, which was beautiful. I was like, but man, when she said it, it triggered, you know, it triggered a lot of different ideas. And it almost started to unravel my mind, I remember, when I started listening to the idea of what ethics was, and for me to share something about it. And then I always come back to this concept of love, especially as it relates to this song or our, our walks on earth, because it's very important. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go from there. Anyone know what this is right here, this shiny thing? Fire. I'm sorry? Fire. I like that. I like that. Usually the children in the room say it's the sun, but it's the fire in the sky that kind of really does. It ignites our, our being. Like, can you imagine, and there are places on this earth when you wake up and it's not present? Like, I mean, not, not, just, not, not just clouds in the way. I'm talking about if it didn't rise, you know what your experience would be that way. I mean, because I don't know that the sun has any ethical, you know, notion as it relates to us. You know, does it want to keep us alive? We like for it to keep us alive, but 41 days at a time is like sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. Here's a word if you won't mind. Don't. Can you read that? <laughs> yes, yes. This is an ethical dilemma. Um, it is. It really is because, you know, I asked the question, are there any other ways that you can express this that you can think of? Anyone? Oh, oh hi. 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 Hola. Yes. Smile. Smile. Yes? Mm -hmm. Buenos dias. Buenos dias, I like that one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Anybody else? Strava. Where's that one from? Serbian. See, I always learn. I always learn one. <laughs> what else? Anybody? I love you. I love you too. <laughs> that is so legit. Can you imagine someone walk up to you that day? I love you. And that this would turn into an affair of some kind, I'm sure. <laughs> love affair of great magnitude. With your hands, I typically like, what's up? Like with your body language, it's even greater. And uh, like I've expressed this word all over the globe, and it is. It's a very ethical thing because you, if you can break through just with that thing, you're on a good path, hopefully. And so then, you know, I guess, again, ethically speaking, when I go into this 41st day, um, ethics, 41 days of, and I'm just breaking it down because this is how I look at my dailies. Um, when I gave 41 days of an hour of time, that was pretty interesting. 
because I, I didn't know where to begin. That was challenging. I was like, okay, 41 days, hour at a time. Like, no one's giving you these assignments, you know, not really. So it's not like a direction or a path. But you just start. You go, okay, day one, and I put it out into the universe, and then it started to respond. Uh, 41 days of the right to remain silent. I watch a lot of Law and Order. <laughs> and I do know Miranda. But Miranda, whoever that idea, that precedence, wherever that came from, doesn't own this idea. It's like within us to just remain silent and walk through that, you know? And ethically speaking, you know, you probably have walked through some situations where you're looking at it and you're like, this is wrong. And ethically, you're just walking through it. But then there are other moments where you're like, this is wrong, but I'm about something. And I'm going to do something about this. So, you know, ethics can grow. 41 days of truth, I went out, I went out to individuals and I was just like, what is truth? Would you be interested in, in talking about that? And there were many people who were interested in it. Was very, it was very uh, ethically, you know, sound for me because I was listening to 41 perspectives on the idea of truth. Uh, 41 days of who. And I'm going to go into that one a little bit because your name, there's something ethical about that foundational and moral, like my name has meaning. And if you don't know your, the meaning of your name, Google it. If you already know it, you probably know a little bit something about yourself. Shame means God is gracious in a Celtic uh, language. So I thought, man, and I learned that later on. And then my dad, he wanted to name me Moses or Shaft. Those are the <laughs> My mom was like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Shane will do. <laughs> Who are you? And they, these are the 41 questions, you know, because I, I asked people, I said, well, tell, take me deeper. Is it Shane only or are there other names? And people would often have nicknames, etc. Who are you? What is your life story? And think about ethics when you think about this, I think. Why is this your life story? Where are you most comfortable? How do you show love? What is change? What can you teach another? And then, so you walk the walk, so to speak. And as I play with this idea, the 40, 41 days, and the idea of the sun, and there's just some words, and you know, there's scriptures here as well, although the words by themselves don't really, um, they are for you, you know. I, I even had a repeat here that I need to fix, but shine, I can do that two times, no problem. <laughs> Um, to be, you know, pain, this is a very dynamic one as you relate to uh, everything as it relates to ethics. You know, when you start to categorize the ideas over these ideas and you think about ethics as it relates to peace, forgiveness, you know, vanity, love, etc., it really starts to expand the definition like that graph. I mean, it starts to go crazy. Who are we? Ethically speaking, um, in America, we are something, and I've seen my manifestation, I say that, of going overseas and then wanting to be like, I'm American, you know, certain situations, but other situations, I'll be like, I'm Canadian. <laughs> um, and so, but though, there's something that's been triggered in me as, a, as an adult and as a child to understand this idea of dream and, and spiritually speaking. And what that means, you know, and a lot of people lose touch with it, you know. So, kind of walking forward in that, in that regard, what is your story? And then again, it's our connection. And this, I think, is where ethics start to, start to make a union. You know, it's weird if, you know, if I walk up to somebody who's like, hey, let me hold your hand. People be like, nah, mm -mm, I don't know you that way. Um, but then, after I get to know you some, then at the, hopefully towards the end of the journey, it'll be like, oh yeah, let's hold hands. And then you kind of skip down the street, you know. <laughs> when I went to individuals, you know, this is, this is a good friend of mine, actor Tay Diggs. You know, here's this idea of 41 days of uh, exploration of self through encouraging, or I'm sorry, engaging the world. Um, I, the one, and it's, it's going to mix up, but what is your life story? It's layered to be continued. I like that. This gentleman is a business owner here in town. Um, what is change? Getting away from the negative influence of media, TV, and radio, etc. Talk about ethics. Dr. Dr. Kalsa, this cat is just incredible chiropractor. Lives here in town. Why is this your life story? Because of willpower. A choice to nurture myself and change my perspective. In patience, I realize there is something that I can share with another. And you don't, you don't know what the, the one before this was, um, 
what is your life story? So you can kind of expand your idea each time. I mean, you know, single family home, talk about ethics, a middle child, you know, started as a rapper, listening to Salt and Pepper and Janet Jackson. I mean, so I can relate. I really can. I have a, a relationship. I went to Vegas, and this dude had one leg. He had one leg. And, he, and after, after this interview, he was so hyped. He was like, man, I love this, what you're doing, man. He was like, you got to publish this. And I was like, dude, I'm, I, okay. Like, you know, seriously, like he was so geeked that it's still inspiring me, you know, just this idea. And that was many years ago. So I think, you know, again, ethics is my father. You know, talk about an ethical journey in, in listening. You know, all those questions I thought were so challenging for the stranger. But then when I really got down to the nitty gritty, like interviewing your family, what is your life story? I'm like, oh, this will tell me a lot about me. He did a lot for the neighborhood too. Um, Father David, where are you most comfortable? In my garden with my dogs and behind the altar at church. Ah, you know, that father-son relationship or that father-child relationship is so important. I mean, this child is much older. This was some years back. So just knowing, you know, Gustavo and what he's done. I don't know. You've seen him running around. You know. You know. He talk about, talk about like a, just a great gentleman, you know. He's just a sweet, sweet brother and very encouraging. Ethically, ethically he will encourage you. He will. I mean, you might know some of these folks. These are friends, neighbors. I really think that, you know, the more you kind of reach out with the idea of ethics, the more you understand, you know, how delicate a nature it is. I, this woman, it was towards the end of the day, I try to do these things every day, and I hadn't sat with anyone yet. So I pulled my car up, and she's sitting all alone on a bench. Talk about ethics, man. I'm like reviewing myself going, I am a man. I am a brown man. I am a man in a hat, you know, and I'm going to approach this person who is sitting on a bench. She is a woman. You know, I'm being honest. She is a white woman. Is this going to be okay? And I said, hi, how are you? She's like, hi. And I said, I'm doing this. I'm paraphrasing. I'm doing this thing. Would you be interested? And she's like, sure. I was like, yes. <laughs> I sit down and I start the questions and she goes, wow, like I'm an art therapist, I'm always listening. So I said, oh, well then today is your opportunity to share. I think when you break down other people's ethical guidelines that sometimes mislead our feet, your feet, then you, like, you get this surprise inside like Cracker Jacks. <laughs> um, I think the more, you, the more you appeal to the person that you're most uncomfortable with, probably yourself, um, the more you are open to the other people you think you're not comfortable with. And then when you sit down and you start to hear their story, I mean, it really, it's a, it's a very impactful experience. She didn't want to see the camera. I was like, because everybody had their way of doing this. You could do your portrait, however. She was like, it, it, would it be okay if I turned my head? I said, sure. You know, what, what can you teach another? Nothing, unless they want to learn. I thought, yes, I agree. Charlotte O'Neill, her, you know, her and her husband, they had to flee Kansas City. He is a Black Panther, you know, and talk about ethics as well. You know, he had gotten into a situation. The story is, you know, he got into a situation. We had to make some choices. He was like, I'm either going to go in front of a judge and I don't know what's going to happen or I'm going to run for my life. And he set up his life in Tanzania and, and um, he grew an organization there um, for hundreds and hundreds of youth to be involved in education, and, and he himself learned, you know. He had to learn to get back to the earth, you know, get back to the fundamentals of growing food and hunting for food and things like that. So she brings her, her wisdom back to town when she can. This is me. This is the ethical little dreamer. And I do remember these times, um, this is Buffalo, New York, um, just, I don't know, I just, I had a good, I had a good time. 
uh, growing up, and I appreciated, you know, my mother and my father and everything that they did for me as a person. I just thought it was just like an, an incredible experience. Um, and then I'm going to get back and I'm going to get into these books because I feel like I have, I come up to a lot of ethical dilemmas and uh, openings when I'm working on books. Shaq and the Beanstalk and other very tall tales. That was an ethical dilemma. Because I had to take these old stories like Jack and the Beanstalk and the, uh, uh, three, the three Bears and then f put Shaq inside of it, you know, instead and flip these ideas around, not only for myself, but for others. Um, mm, this series, Free at Last, No More, talk about ethical dilemmas here in the United States. You know, it takes you back from the enslaving of a group of humans into the, into the system and throughout and you know, on through the um, civil rights movement. Etc. And these are very challenging stories. I sit there prior and I'm like, how am I going to unfold this for a child who is this age, around 8, these are 8 to 12, they say. But that's an ethical dilemma. I'm, it is. Um, this, this story right here, I really feel like when it first came out where the wild things are, there were a lot of like pushbacks with this idea. You know, the, the, even Maurice is quoted as saying, you know, the publisher really wasn't behind it. It was scary. Imagine, you know, all the different mindsets that you have towards what media is today. Like that was applied to this very, what we look at now is very innocent book. So I think eth ethics over time, it grows, it expands, it, you know, conforms, it reforms, it does a lot. In my, in my journeys, and this is in South Africa, you have to have perspective to get a sense of what ethics is, I think. You know, you go to a, another land and you, you don't know anything really about it. I know you could Google all day, but the reality is that once you get there, it's a totally different experience to connect with the humans that are there and to be a part of the experience. This was on a um, 26th of December or a celebration of really just community life through an idea called Kwanzaa. And you know, this moment in time where you like think about with poor and rich and these different crazy ideas, and that's what that 41 day is about. You know, it's a contrast between this and that, you know, the contrast between those who have and those who have not. And I often find that those who have not are the ones that when I'm connecting with them, I'm like, I'd rather be over here now that I know about the haves. And you know, this child probably has no real understanding of what wealth is, just based on, based on my idea. So you know, I can't project my ethics onto anyone. And I feel like, you know, from that perspective too, as I walk into a room, I don't know who the billionaire is. I can't see you just by looking at you. <laughs> and certainly the billionaire isn't going to go, me. No. And I definitely don't know who doesn't have anything in their bank account. And that person is, they might. Like, if you really wanted something that day, you'd be like, me. You know, it's a totally different vibe. Like, I got nothing in my bank account. Ethically speaking, I think at that moment, everybody would be like, well, let me see what I've got in my pocket that I can give over to you. And I think this exchange is really more delicate when you're just looking at it at this very childlike, you know, perspective. Ah, uh, chocolate meat. This was an ethical dilemma, believe it or not. We went out there, you know, Tay Diggs and I, we went out there and we thought, oh man, this is perfect. You know, this, this was seven or eight years ago now. And we're like, oh, this is perfect. This, people are going to enjoy this. And then we just kept meeting up against opposition, like you know, publishers being like, nah, it's not going to work. That don't even happen today. Racism, that ain't real. It's not racism. Not, it's not about racism. It's just about a kid. He was like, door closed. All right. And you, you kind of keep moving. You don't really, you don't regard some of those things. You tally it up a little bit, but eventually you got to be like, let that go. And then, so then as we kind of move forward, you know, and the United States is a very particular kind of experiment, you know, where humans are relating to one another and they're creating love foundations through ethics, you know, because again, like we got to trace this idea back to the Greek idea and where it all kind of connects us as humans. So if we're in that system right now, you know, this, this actually in some ways today is an issue. If I put it, and I, and I, not to point these, this is a beautiful family. Um, if I put this in the context of, oh, this is 1950, then everybody can be like, oh, I get that, why that would be an issue. Um, but then, you know, ethically speaking, like, what about them? You know, 
forget all the other nonsense because look at her. That should speak volumes to, you know, ethically what's going on within that love dynamic. Back to it. Mixing the mixing of ideas, you know, that's kind of, again, what the idea of ethics is. It's like a whole bunch of different letter forms that come together and create this, this thing. You know, mix me is a relationship. Ethically, you know, I worked on this project called Underground. Who knows about the Underground Railroad? Yes? Okay. Um, who knows when it began? Anyone? Who knows when it ended? Anyone? Right. <laughs> <laughs> there was no beginning and there was no ending. So then we talk about this place and this space, and it's a matter of freedom. And then, you know, I think from that perspective, what is freedom? And then now we look at our freedoms in today's society and we talk about their ethics. And if we were to plot this course of action to continue into 2016, then we know somebody is enslaved, the idea, and then we know somebody is working towards freedom as well. I very consciously made these human beings blue, you know, and I ask children sometimes, what color are these people? And I'll get brown, black, and then somebody will finally see it, blue. So then, yes, it's not a form of, you know, enslavement so much, or, you know, it's not a form of freedom. It's like this balance between the two, all of us, you know, when you really start looking at the idea ethically. And I jumped from that book to, you know, this March on Washington, and it seems like a lot of space in between, but it's the continuation, it's the dream. Olu's dream, oh yes, 10 years in the works. Um, this was a very, uh, I don't know, I, thought, I found it to be a very challenging lift because it was a lot about me, but it was a lot about others as well. You know, what does it mean to dream? Um, what do you want to be in this experience? And then this is behind the scenes. Like, ethically speaking, again, when I'm working with all these other, you know, people, editors, art directors, we're trying to map out, you know, how this does the best thing as it goes out. But, you know, you get, in, in, this, in this story, he gets tired, falls asleep, he flies. And then, you know, again, speaking on this community, you know, you take an old building. That, to me, is ethically wrong. You know, I'm just talking about it from, you know, I keep using the word all over. Seeing empty houses and then knowing that someone doesn't have a house. So something, something incorrect about that. Um, so then finding this building was interesting and just putting it back together. Then taking the concept and you know, bringing it kind of like worldwide was the idea with this Olu's dream thing, you know, and going out into other communities. And, you know, this too is something, you know, you have to review, you have to review yourself. I'm not really bringing anything so much. I'm opening myself up to learning in that community. I found myself in Southern Africa, Botswana. I'm very ethically, like, my head shakes. I just stopped going. I used to really enjoy zoos. But then I would really look and I'd be like, those animals, are, you can't see that they're not happy. Um, and so then when I went to Botswana, and you know, ethically speaking again, like well, this is not our world. You know, this is their world too. So finding myself without cages in front of my body meant that I had to regard these creatures in a different way. This woman, she had 22 children that she brought into this very small home. And, you know, she kind of just, her life is around their life. So, you know, this is the dream. Taught me a lot, you know. Molly. And that doesn't matter, you know, I don't, you don't have to go thousands of miles away to find ethics. Uganda, you can go within your own community and help share your gifts. Those are good ethics. Anything that you've learned, you know, you can, you can provide. I love these girls. Dawn, you in the room? Where's she at? Um... <laughs> You know, we've been to Africa together, and I say Africa, but it was specifically Uganda, and just talk about some learning about ethics. Some of these children's stories just were, I didn't even want to know them. To be honest, there were stories there when I just start to hear the beginning of it, I'd be like, nope, I'm here for a different reason today, and we just kind of, we're going to keep going. And then they, they taught me a lot about forgiveness. I spent 10 days there. It's still resonating in my everything. Ethics, ethical child, Olu. I do this thing called Oluisms. Um, and I'm going to read this. There was a bird that lived on top of a tree. 
and there was a guy who lived at the base of the tree. Then his neighbor didn't like the tree because the branches would send leaves into his yard. So that neighbor said he would pay the guy to cut the tree and take the wood. The neighbor agreed. He took the money for the tree and the neighbor cut down the tree and took the wood. No one asked the bird a thing. Now that is an ethical dilemma for this, this child and for our community, for the bird, for the neighbors. You know, so on and so forth. Um, this right here is the theme song to the book. And, and to me, it, it is. It's very important to conclude with some musical, you know, selection. It's short, you know, so. And you guys sounded good before, too, so I really. You guys can do that. Oh, that is so funky. Keep it going. That last snap, oh, there's a couple stragglers. <laughs> That's it. 